Yeah, there are some new details from Katie Couric's upcoming memoir that are raising questions about her journalistic integrity. So in 2016, Katie sat down with late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and asked her how she felt about NFL players taking a knee during the national anthem protest. Here's the portion of RBG's response that was published at the time. What do I think? I think it's really dumb of them. Would I arrest them for doing it? No. I think it's dumb and disrespectful. I would have the same answer if you asked me about flag burning. But now it turns out that Katie said she left out some quotes, like RBG saying that those who kneel are showing, quote, contempt for a government that had made it possible for their parents and grandparents to live a decent life. Katie said she did it to protect RBG, but some are saying this proves that journalists have an agenda. Okay, Tori, I know how much you love RBG. Yeah. You've met her. What did yeah. you think of her comments? And then Katie Couric editing those comments. I don't, first of all, I just have to say a blanket statement. I don't get what Katie Couric's doing. Because now I think everything she's done is edited or curated. Like, what about Matt Lauer? I straight up begs the question, have you edited what's happened with Matt Lauer? Secondly, with RBG, if you do know her, she's not a strong First Amendment person in as the justice system. And she actually doesn't really believe in flag burning, which is protected by Texas v. Johnson. So she's not the most progressive with First Amendment. I don't agree with her. I think she's wrong, but she publicly apologized after to Colin Kaepernick saying, I didn't know your intent. Attention. I shouldn't have spoken out back on in that. 2016 back in 2016 so not only did she apologize I also don't have to be in love with everything Ruth Bader Ginsburg says do I like her values yes do I disagree with her wholeheartedly on this wholeheartedly I think this is a really great example especially using this context of the kneeling because in 2016 there are people who are in this room right now there are people who are watching right now who felt very differently right, yeah. about the kneeling in 2016 than they do do now now. And I think that we have to talk about evolution of thought. You know, sometimes when we are just not privy to things and we're closed minded, we don't want to learn, then that stunts us from growing. Yeah. But ultimately, if you are a productive person, you're a person who has flexibility of thought and can grow to understand. So the idea that she would come back in 2016 and say, I did not understand what was at the root yeah. of this movement is very important. And it's a lesson that a lot of us can take away from that. Yeah, and that she did it so openly because that's not easy to say on yourself. So let's put RBG aside. What do you think of Katie Couric and her journalistic integrity? I, took the, I was pr practicing journalistic integrity <laughs> in my head while you said that. I'm not even kidding. I go, why would she compromise her journalistic integrity? I was saying that. Already, I swear. So why would she, right? Why would she do that? Why would she out herself just to sell this book? I got to agree with Tori here. Why? Wow. You're wow. agreeing with Tori. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. And, I mean, and I don't know why. And just to echo what Erica said, to hold somebody accountable for what they said 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago and not be able to change that thought and hold them to that and say that they're a bad person, we need to get away from that. And that's where we're at in society. So I really agree with what Yeah, I said. really take issue with Katie Couric here. And it's hard for me to even say that because I am a big fan of hers. Yeah. But now I'm starting to reevaluate because I think it's really like we here are allowed to have opinions because we are an opinion based show. But when I look to certain journalists, I really don't want to see a bias. Even if I'm a Democrat or a Republican, I want them to go in there and uncover the truth. I don't care if it's Bill Clinton or Donald Trump. Tell me the truth about this individual so I can decide as a constituent whether or not I want to support them. So for her to edit based on her own biases, makes me rethink her and her journalistic and, integrity. And, well, and then openly admit it too. It's like, you think you're not gonna get kind of fit, like some clap back on that? See, this reads to me like what, like almost like a, a deathbed confession when you have a memoir like this, you know, I'm gonna leave this all on the table. But I do wanna address this, Sam, because I think what you said is very important in this climate when everything is automatically, if you don't like it, then it's fake news. Because ultimately, because editorial, as we do, editorial, I always, I always say, and I don't want to speak for everybody on the panel, but I always say, I'm a former radio girl. I did not go to school to become a journalist. But because we're on television talking about trending and breaking news, people automatically will slap that title of journalist. I get benefits that journalists do not get. Like I can do things that journalists do not get do, do not get to do. So when we start to conflate yes. those two things, there's a difference between a hard news journalist and someone who is doing editorial news. Gotta remember and that. if we don't have that discussion, 
discussion. And if we don't make those things clear, then everybody who gets in front of a camera is, a is allowed to be called a journalist. And yes, we do start to get what can we believe? What can't we believe? And that is a very important line that needs to be defined, especially in this moment. Well said, Erica.